<laughs> Welcome to our first podcast, the DeNovo Team Podcast. I'm Ryan with my team of teammates. Yes, and I'm Ben Esker. I'm Jacob Orms. Who needs to shave before he gets on the podcast next time? <laughs> I think you need to shave. I think well, my beard is What about me, guys? <laughs> um, we have a cool topic we want to talk about today, and it's bro in the stereotypical sense of bra, bro. Um, and it kind of stems from a story we had and this we've been talking about this for like probably a year We've been wanting to talk about this. We we're at the gym commercial gym. It's just Ben and I and this guy just finished his giant giant set uh, and he was doing a What was he doing like legs like press or something leg press or X something? Ball. Yeah, and he's pretty winded, right? Um, and so he's on the ground and the guy gets some um, his trainer. He says Get up, bro. Get up, man. You don't, you don't, you don't want to breathe that air on the ground. It's, it ain't, ain't no good air down there. You got to stand up. And fucking just wrong, right? It's absolutely not true. Like, it's a fluid. It's, it's fine anywhere um, if you're in within the atmosphere um, that we breathe in. But he did have a point. And his point was that if you stand up, uh, your diaphragm can actually breathe better, which you can get more air in. So it was like the correlation of bro is wrong, but... I would I think we would like to make the argument that there's something to be said for yes. bro. So it's important to have hypotheses and um, to not be afraid of, of being wrong and that's where the the fundamental importance of of bro is uh, is that without basically bro is a heavily experience based hypothesis. So you need somewhere to start your testing. Uh, and without, without bros uh, throughout history, we wouldn't have the understanding that we have now. And we need to not be afraid to uh, depart into, into broness and embrace it and appreciate it. it. The problem is when it controls every decision we make where we have an observation and then we make a correlation based on that observation and believe it to be true. Uh, that's that's a it's a very again fundamental flaw um, so we need to appreciate our observations but then have a deductive process of kind of refining them and uh, I, I know we can really shoot off on multiple kind of tangent lines off of that um, but that was the base thought that we had and that we wanted to really uh, open up for discussion simply because we need to look at the history of how we've developed things like dietary guidelines and I know that that can be another topic for why that's asinine but um, even the fundamental nature of how we've become to understanding that nutrients are essential uh, and I'll just use one quick example and then I'm gonna uh, kind of push it over so this is everybody's discussion um, in back in in in, in the BC's uh, we understood that food had components and we called it nutriment which basically just means it has sustenance that it has something in it that allows us to, sur to survive but we couldn't break it into anything beyond that uh, one dimensional view of food and then over time it took a very long time for example it wasn't until the 1600s that we started making these correlations of uh, attachments to something in food that was preventing us from getting deficiencies so Again, in the 1600s, they actually put iron filings in wine uh, and discovered that it actually prevents uh, anemia. And iron, then, iron wine. Yeah, exactly, which is a great band. Um, and then in the 1700s, uh, again, we're talking a century here goes by that we have this correlation of sailors who are out at sea and they don't have access to citrus fruits. So I believe it was a physician who started giving the sailors citrus fruits and they weren't getting scurvy anymore. So we saw the association between specific food nutrients and disease. And the last point I'm gonna make before I, I, I kind of hand it over is that what we need to understand from that foundation is that we are still in that period where uh, we don't know everything, we're still refining. And this is where bro is important is it's important to keep feeding hypotheses um, because if you're afraid to be wrong, you are now, you are, you are at a stall, you're in suspended uh, kind of animation intellectually. So bro's important, but you just can't go too far to any one 
side of, of, the, of the scale. Um, so we need both. We need bro and we need uh, objective fact-based and that the worlds need to come together. They can't really fight. They need to appreciate one another. So, so kind of the thought I was having um, before we got started was um, kind of just like what so there obviously we have bro and then we kind of have more like evidence-based uh, approaches to different things so I guess when you think when you're thinking about bro like what is the kind of like fundamental problem then is that yeah you need to have these observations and uh, form these hypotheses but um, I guess the danger in that is that you you're gonna make a lot of mistakes, and you gotta tell you, me. You gotta tell me the the quote from your favorite show. I don't even know. I don't even know what it is so from Adventure Time. Uh, oh yeah, it's perfect. So yeah, this is a quote from Adventure Time. It is one of my favorite shows, and it's uh, from Jake the Dog, and he just says in one of the episodes, um, he just says, "Dude, sucking at something is the first step to being kind of good at something." So where do we draw this line, you know what I mean? It's like, I think what I see online and from what I observe online, the, the real issue is that, the real anger towards bro is that you know better. Um, we know better as, a, as human culture. Like, there is better information out there. And I think the anger towards them is that it's their refusal to accept what is new, what is progressive. And you can use that argument with essentially anything from politics to religion to, to anything you can use that uh, to add that argument but um i guess where do we as people who are probably would listen to this as the progressive people fuck that thing as the progressive people essentially um where do we i guess say where's our responsibility to know that these people we need i don't want to say the word dumb because it's not dumb but these risk takers who are willing to do something and, and find correlation that we didn't even know existed like where do we sit back and get off our high horse of knowing all of the the knowledge so you know i need I mean? yeah i need to i need to enter at this point in, in your point um and i think again i think there's there's two really important things we need to realize and understand is in this process of gathering information it's almost storing it in our, in our data servers, um, writing more things on our hard drive, which is our brain. Uh, we need to not get lost in the process where we start to attain more and more and start to have this self-belief that now we're a smart supercomputer. Uh, we need to understand that we came from, at one point, no matter how pure you are, how pure of a purist you are, at some point you came from a bro foundation. Absolutely. You're not yeah. born into this amazing amount of knowledge. Uh, it, it's, it's a lifetime process. So we can, the anger that, that, is, that I see all the time on social media, it, it needs to be more of an appreciation. Um, and it, everybody has theories. Even, even the greatest scientists have theories. Relativity was a theory. Um, so we need to understand that just because we've amassed X amount of data behind our theory, it doesn't mean our theory is perfect. And it's almost like developing this emotional attachment to something that's ours. Um, and then watching other people kind of fight over it. Yeah. Uh, you need to understand that not everybody is trying to attack your child. Um, and, and that theory can be further developed by someone's but criticism. But I, I, I think one thing that key thing that could be said about this um, and I know we see it in clients and I just want to say as a disclaimer guys that we obviously do the most empirical uh, optimal working thing that's out there um, for our clients or anyone we work with but a lot of people have been hurt by these bro ways yeah. you know, a lot of people have had quote unquote met mistakes metabolic, meta metabolic damage oh. as Elaine would say well, yeah you try something and sometimes it doesn't work or Absolutely. it does work and the, there are negative ramifications to it that you didn't know about until you tried it so this is kind of like the like linear thought process i was having like we've been talking about the selfish gene a lot yep. 
But wait, um, just, um, just so you guys know, Selfish Sheen is by Dawkins. Yes. Right. Um, good book if anybody's interested. Yes. Um, clean, clean book. <laughs> 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 um, so here was like kind of my linear thought process. Like if you're a bro and as far as like training, um, so you do a lot of these things by mistake. Um, so let's say you're just like some guy, you're going to go in and like bench press or something. And um, so you kind of go in and probably when you guys first started training, you probably did this too. You kind of go in and you're like, well, I bench pressed uh, 225 for five reps last time I did chest. Uh, so let's this time I'll try like 235 yeah, or something and I'll try to get and I'll try to get uh, five repetitions with that assuming that I am stronger from last time like so you're... that's essentially observation uh, hypothesis I observed that I did this and I hypothesized that I'll be able to do this so then you go in and you test it so you say okay you put 235 on and you try to do your sets and so what happens let's say you only get like three okay so now you have some sort of result from your experiment um and the kind of point that i'm trying to get to is that yes that can work um and you can make a lot of observations that way and make progress that way but um my question that i eventually got to well is they talk about in the selfish gene and what i asked myself is like well in this context what is research then and it's kind of like a simulation and what i was talking to i think i was talking to you guys about this before is um so you can do all these things that are experience-based but when you only learn through that way, um, one, it takes a lot of time. It's not as time efficient. The way of actually performing it yourself. Yeah, literally doing it, it yourself. messing up, and then fixing it. Not efficient way to do things. Uh, not likely. And two, um, it might not be safe all yep. the time yeah. either. Maybe your last time. So... This this is this that's that's a awesome point to bring up because it it allows us to now merge that point with how we started how we opened this conversation, which is you need to understand that the foundation that our knowledge base is built upon is mistake, 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 breakthrough. Mistake, 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 breakthrough. And if you decide that your model is going to be I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. I'm going to keep making mistakes. I'm going to keep making mistakes. How do you ever progress upon the foundation we have? So this is what academia does. This is what um, going through schooling and, and stuff in a specific area does for you, is it tells you here is the, we have this collection of everything people did wrong, and I'm going to give it to you, and now what your job is, is to improve upon that model and now contribute to this. So build upon the foundation. So just like building a house, we make this foundation, set in the ground, concrete. Now you could build your wooden frame over it. And, and that's what this, this journey is, is really about. So taking the, the uh, concept of what Jake said, and, and now let's, let's create something with that. Let's take something practical from all these words. Uh, and why, is, why are most people listening to this to talk about training or nutrition? So what needs, what needs to be the fundamental thing? I like that word. What needs to be the fundamental thing that you do if you want to make progress and understand why you're making progress and be able to improve upon the progress you're making and generate better and more hypotheses? Because what we're really doing here is trying to get close to answers. We're really never going to get to definitives. Um, because, well... Research is a simulation. Yeah, yes. It's not you. Yes, exactly. So what we need to do is, again, using what Jake spoke of, is we can't just observe and then say 
and, and then jump to conclusion. It's observe conclusion, observe. It doesn't work that way. What you need to do is track. You need yes. to have a method of tracking these variables and then being able to make stronger associations. That's what correlations are. And if anybody's ever heard anybody say the term correlation is not causation, it's because we can get strong correlations, but if we don't control for all of the variables, those correlations can be very, very misleading. So I'm going to give a practical example of my process of something I think that now I'm associated with, um, which is a correlation um, with programming because of very popular people's success that I have been associated with. Uh, I think sometimes people can think that I went through some kind of academic process and I was given answers along the way. Like there's some esoteric book that someone handed to me and said, this is how you program. And now there's some kind of dark magic where it's like the Knights Templar where Zordos and I are sitting in this room and worshiping <laughs> the devil uh, and finding out answers about uh, the secrets of programming. And the reality is what has happened is Mike does it in a very controlled setting in a lab. I should say Dr. Zordos. Uh, whereas I do it in, in a definitely a less controlled environment, but in my own world, I, I, I tested every hypothesis I could and I would track it. That's why the money I spent, I, I'd invest in Nintendo for quantitative feedback, or I do high volume programs and see what happened to me and then f recruit people who wanted to be my test subjects yeah. and then record and, and track and record their data. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you can tease out the trends. So, um, what a, a knowledge building a knowledge of programming or anything like that what it comes from is well controlled experience um and not being afraid to be your own research subject uh and also not being afraid to to test hypotheses be wrong i think that the really overwhelming point that that i wanted to make in this was that um that sometimes there can be this internet idea that people who are associated with people who make great success don't make mistakes. And that is, it's so, so wrong. Like I say dumb things in this house all the time and they're wrong. And, but th it's, there's beauty in being wrong because I learned from that. So you can't, you can't be afraid of hurting your ego by being wrong and having a, a quote unquote dumb hypothesis. Um, it just, yeah, you, you need to research and you need to, not get too attached to ideas because I'm still doing things that are wrong yeah. and I'm still finding out answers. So even things that people might associate me with, like Ben thinks you should only do all the power lifts all the time. Guess what? I, I mean, that's getting flipped on its head now. So um, I think one thing that I think if, if people could take one message from this, it's that hear the message that people that you maybe respect their opinion in these fields hear their message, but don't take it as definitive truth. Absolutely. What you need to understand is that you might be misinterpreting the short, the short vision of what they're saying in a one second or 15 minute clip they give. Um, and the point of that is to give a little bit of information and then you pick up on that. So just like what we talked about before with the academic model is pick up on where we're trying to push. Um, it's almost like someone's giving you a push behind you to help you sprint a little faster. So what I'm kind of hearing is um, from kind of both of you, and I want to take it all the way back to what Jake said about simulation and what you said about academia. Um, I'm not saying this is ideal, and I'm not saying this is definitive, but um, what I'm hearing from what you two have done and how you've been successful is essentially everything that has been done so far in human history and academia that we know is fact, right? We say this is fact we will stick with this um and there's this fusion like literally like a like a burning fusion line between what we know and the unknown and between there is this perfect marriage between uh i guess the world in which we would call bro and non-bro essentially um to say to say that uh well this is right this is right this is optimal this is the way that comes to me at a level of disrespect, it seems like. And I'm not saying that it's not the proper way because that's what I preach. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's just a matter of knowing that bro isn't proper in the stereotypical sense. But I think it's more so that 
you can learn a little bit from bro. You can learn a little bit from the person who says, I have a feeling about this. And if you can combine that and marriage it with the person who says, I also have a base of knowledge and I'm going to combine these two things together through things like simulation, through things like reading um, and prior experiences that has already been done in human history. So in my opinion, and I'm not saying this is Ben or Jake's opinion, I'm, I'm not going to push that on them. I would say that uh, being on one side of the fence is just never a good idea. Yep. No. Yeah. Saying that I'm bro, I'm going to do it this way. This is how my pop did it. My pop got shredded when the 87 J- Jersey East Coast classic doing this. I'm going to do it this way. It's also as bad as the person who says, well, hit cardio is the way to do it. And, and eating if you admit, is the way to do it. Anyone so lost in any conviction, I think, is... There are just, there's too many variables. I mean, you can control what you can, but Absolutely. that's where the importance of context is always going to come in. That's the most important word that, that can come out of this. Um, and let's, let's take everything we're talking about and, and flip it into something that everybody can appreciate, which everybody likes art in some form, whether it's acting, whether it's painting, whether it's music. And imagine a world where we found, we quote unquote found that there was a perfect version of art. Imagine how boring and dull that world would be if everybody had to have the same interpretation of this art is mathematically correct. It's super symmetry. And you now everybody has to do that. Well, there would be no uh, Picasso. There, there would be no abstract art. And bros break the rules so yes and and so there needs to be again when you're talking about any kind of balance scale look at both ends of the balance the balance beam on one end you have to have the people who like the rules and are going to fight for the rules and on the other end you have to have the rule breakers the people who challenge the rules and you have to be able to meet in between and and not meet in between angrily because at that point no one is actually learning anything. You're fighting to retain your point. And that, again, it's, I said it before, it's intellectually dangerous. Um, you need to be able to see the other perspective and, and as Jake said, put it into context. Um, don't run with it by what your interpretation is and then try to misapply it. Um, and one quick example I'm going to use is talking about clinical applications of nutrition therapy like medical nutrition therapy versus this this is the best way for me to get shredded now um that that can be very dangerous uh or looking at something where it changes your your RER which is like uh your respiratory exchange ratio um and, and then now making a run with that by saying oh boy uh, by saying it changes my RER to burn more fat therefore that means chronically over time i have uh, better fat burning. It's the better. It's the best diet now for fat loss. Uh, that's it's too one dimensional. The, the world does not exist in only an RER. It does not exist in only a bomb calorimeter where we throw food in it and burn it and see how much energy it gives off. So I think at this point, or I don't know, probably like twenty five minutes in or something like that. Um, if people have, have still been kind of sticking with us, I think one thing that if I were an outsider of this conversation, that I would be thinking right now is what the fuck do I do, right? I am. I would be honest. I would be honestly, I would honestly be looking for an answer. And I don't know if that's ironic by all of what was just said, or I don't know if that's proper of a, of a listener to say, okay, well, I'm not opposed. I'm, 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 I'm accepting of um, the science side, which is true. You can't argue uh, that much. And I'm also accepting of not so much the extremists of bro, but maybe a small 10% of what they do in terms of saying, nah, fuck that. I have a feeling about this. And then you follow that up with the scientific method. Um, if you had to, and I, and I hate to put you guys on the spot, if you had to say what to do, what not to do in a very clear way, because that's what, that's how most people are used, used to hearing things, not abstractly, um, yeah, like what what would you tell someone's mind to do? Not that you're telling someone someone's mind to do, but uh, essentially with this information that you process to not go on being confused, what would be the next step? I guess if you can even tell someone what the next step is, right? Well, I, I think on a certain level, 
there there's a required level of specialization to understand what you're looking at and uh, what you're doing and what it all means. So that doesn't mean you have to go to school and get a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate in the field, but you need to buy textbooks that people are using in in uh, in that field. And we have that. That's that's what we have on DenovoConsulting.net is. Every time I read a great textbook, I add it to the bank on there, and it's under resources. So these are things I've read for programming and nutrition, and I've found valuable. And some of them, we, there's basic level, which is where you should start, and then going, getting to more advanced stuff. So understanding what you don't know, um, or knowing what you don't know, uh, is an important part. And then from a, the most practical way I can say it is don't fear making mistakes. However, you need to track your mistakes. Meaning, think logic is the strongest card you can have in your deck, which is think of something logically. If you were a caveman, a Neanderthal, and you needed to survive out in the world that the, without the houses and the things we've created, what would make the most sense from an evolutionary survival perspective? And in that way, you need to track. So again, I'm going to use a a practical endpoint here is if you had to lift an enormous rock every day to you were trapped inside of a cave you had to and this is maybe impractical but you had to lift or move this this rock every day so you could get out and survive and get back out into the world what do you think is going to drive you getting that rock moved over time just one time trying to push it as hard as you can and then giving up until the next two days because you need enough rest or slowly appropriately dosing over time pushing the rock for a little bit longer each time now think of that logically everything you, you do in your life you don't do it really hard once and then assume that you're going to get better the second time you progressively get better and that's progressive overload so i hope that example makes sense to where you can now apply that um, to something, to anything else. And that's the model I always start with, with any kind of hypothesis I have, is how does this evolutionarily make sense? Um, well, just really simply, I guess what I would say is what are you able to glean? Like, what are those overall, like, really overarching cor correlations that you're able to get from uh, kind of scientific data or those textbooks that you're talking about? And then ask yourself, uh, how can I apply these things realistically to my training or yeah. my nutrition and be able to sustain that over time? And then once you are able to do that, then just like we said, make sure you're tracking everything. Try a little variation of one thing or another here or there and see what happens. I think something that kind of a phrase you'll hear I think Ben and I say a lot is that we'll try stuff in our training that like we wouldn't, wouldn't we wouldn't we else. wouldn't we yep, wouldn't yeah. do that to other people yep. but like I want to see well if will this work for me that's almost to me because I mean none of we're all kind of past the point of a quote unquote like noob games yep. Yep. so to me that's the fun of it now is just trying different things and seeing what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, I think um, the way that would make sense for me, if I were a listener, I would say, okay, um, what I need, not what I need to do, what, what, what would be useful to take the leap of faith, and it's the cheesiest quote, but it's a very strong quote, is knowledge is power, right? You cannot take an individual thinking progressive leap out of let me try this for myself if you don't have knowledge. Now, I think this kind of ties everything in. You guys are letting bros take these leaps day in and day out. Bros are taking all of the leaps 10 times out of 10. You're taking zero. You're the ones with the knowledge. You're the ones who are in the science. You're the ones who can read. Why not take what you know, take what, you, what you've been reading, and say, ha, this idea, this idea, this idea. There was at one point in time, I'll give a personal example for me, I don't do, they, these guys know, I don't do plus sets. 
I actually do my plus set based off of my velocity. How how I have a good idea of how fast something's going, and I I would never I would never tell anyone else to do that ever in a million years. But it's obviously working for me. Not that because it's working for me, but I understand how velocity works. I understand how velocity to your one RM works as well. Um, no one told me that. I didn't read that anywhere. I just kind of put the pieces together myself. And I'm not saying this is what you should do. Absolutely not. But I'm trying something out. I'm growing out with the science base behind it, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I, I actually I actually really like that for kind of a closer. Yeah. A yeah. Bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, guys, that was awesome. Any uh, any any last any any last any last words <laughs> uh, i think that I, I would i would just add to that um which is that progress is progress and you need to appreciate it i mean that's i think what, what you were saying is you you're are, you are progress. the progress guy <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so appreciate progress in the right direction and just because someone might be doing something a different way doesn't mean you need to change now that you're progressing um yeah be patient and um that was one of the other things is if you are kind of a bro guy and that can be one of the reasons that you're not seeing progress is you're not tracking a lot of things yeah. so uh yeah track and be patient and uh yeah thank you uh for more about all of us you can go to denova nutrition.com you can go to from there you can find uh information about the resources the consulting that Ben spoke about um, that's most important so I would actually don't even I'm not even going to talk tell you about our products go to www.denovaconsulting.net and under resources you'll see it uh, pretty much laid out um, in correlation to all of the other things that we put out there um, so hopefully that was helpful um, uh, and, and not uh, offensive to those as I said who have went through a personal uh, battle with having a bad coach um, that was bro but it's time to grow. You have to, um, I'm not telling you, I'm not some type of psychological doctor or anything, but it's, there is a point in which you kind of have to progress off of that and see benefit in everything, even if it has a, has been some type of detriment to you in your life. So, all right. Thank you for listening. Bye. Gracias, muchachos.